Hi, my name is Don Tipping, and I'm here at Seven Seeds Farm, which is where Siskiyou Seeds lives, and we grow seeds that we sell. Today, I want to talk about how do you prepare beds for planting, and there's a variety of different ways. On the farm scale, we actually have a tractor, which we use quite a bit, as you can imagine being a farm, but most people are not in that situation and you're going to be more in a garden scale and you're probably going to be using hand tools. So I wanted to share a certain technique that we've begun to employ here on our farm which is has this fancy name called occultation and that's a big word to describe basically depriving the ground from light and here we're using this landscape fabric so this bed has been covered for a few weeks with this woven landscape fabric that's uh, heavy duty. It can last for many years. So I'll go ahead and peel this back. So this was cover crop and weeds and so on. And then I put down some compost cow manure and peel this back. And so what this does is it deprives the, the area of light, which helps to get us a nice friable soil texture. You can see here with the compost and then all the, the worms and the microorganisms come up and create this kind of condition of the soil. But still, I'm going to want to loosen this somewhat to uh, the plant roots basically are going to want air and water. That's what's going to help them to thrive. So there's two different tools that we can use to do that. And I have them over here. One is called a broad fork. And that is this tool here, which I had a, a buddy who has a forage custom make for our farm. That's exactly our bed width. There are commercially available ones. Uh, one I might recommend is called the Meadow Creature. And then this tool here is what's called a digging fork. And it's uh, like a tiny version of that. So I'll basically demonstrate here using the two different tools and you can go at it in the way that you feel like is most appropriate for your scale and um, how you like to do things. So the digging fork is cool because it, it uses a lot of biomechanically appropriate um, actions with the body. So you can see I'm using my body weight to do a lot of the actual digging and then just leverage is loosening the soil. So this is not a very difficult task. I'm not exactly breaking a sweat here. Although if I were to do a lot of this I might and the beauty of this tool is that it doesn't invert your soil layers so the parts of your topsoil that are closest to the surface that have a lot of uh, the biological activity and the microorganisms stay at the top but you can see I'm able to create a very similar action to what you would get through double digging with this tool and again it's not so much about muscles as leverage and to paraphrase the great Archimedes the uh, Greek mathematician said if you give me a lever long enough and a place to stand I can move the earth so we had a, a, a broad fork that I bought from a company and I found that we tended to uh, bend it really easily so I learned from that one and then I asked my buddy who has a forge to make this one that's perfectly suited for our uh, bed with and our, our farm here. So I'll go ahead and stop there with that tool and grab the digging fork. So clearly this is a narrower tool and you'd 
pretty much do the same thing as a broad fork. You know, I'm just gonna move along and lift and aerate the soil in this way. And depending on the kind of, like here we have, I'll just point out, this is a, a rhizome grass. You see, this is a rhizome. It's a perennial grass. These can be a bit of a problem. So the beauty of using the digging fork is you're not chopping this stuff up. You're, you're loosening it. So it makes it quite easy just to um, get all this material out of here. And then I'm just going to throw it where I don't want it. Get it out of this area. But the, the thing about rhizome grasses, if you're not familiar with them, is a piece like this can become a whole nother big grass clump. So I personally really don't like rhizome grasses in my garden beds where I'm gr gonna grow annuals. And the plan here is to plant carrots and beets, that kind of thing. And having thick rhizome grass like this is not gonna work out for that. So basically, you know, with the digging fork, I'm just gonna continue to cruise along here loosening clearly I'm not getting the same width of the soil that I would be with the uh, broad fork but um, not everybody's going to have your buddy make one with a forge whereas you can go down to most garden centers and, and purchase this type of tool I think this was about 30 or 40 dollars for me at a store and uh, the D handle this is called a D handle I would say is preferable to a long handle uh, tool here is called a bow rake mine's fairly worn a little bent but uh, very different than a leaf rake this is the perfect tool for this next step you, you can see the, this is a rigid um, a arrangement of tines. So now that I've forked this bed, I can use this tool to break up these clods and give myself a nice uh, planting surface for either transplanting or direct seeding. And I, whenever I'm doing this, I think of those Japanese Zen rock gardens. And I'm aiming to get a nice, smooth surface that uh, will work for either direct seeding or transplanting. And the, the tines have this action too where I can pull weeds and root clumps out of the soil. Like I've got some comfrey invading this bed, which I am not particularly wanting to have happen. So I can use this to kind of dig those out and uh, remove them. And really what I'm aiming for here is about a 30 inch to 36 inch wide bed top and that gives me the, the perfect uh, arrangement to be planting three rows of, let's say, carrots or beets or kale or lettuce or a lot of our common vegetables, three rows a foot apart across this bed surface. You can see I've got some more rhizome grass there and I'm gonna wanna get all that out the best I can. This stuff can be pretty pernicious. One of the common names of this might be witch grass or Bermuda grass. And uh, makes a great lawn, but not, a, not helpful in your garden. And when you look back over the, the surface that we've created, we've got soil that's been loosened about a foot down. We have a nice bed surface with compost integrated into the 
top couple inches, this is ideal. So that's bed preparation and you can see over here this bed behind us. We did the same thing and we have young lettuce plants, cabbage plants, and some cilantro growing there. And those will be making some beautiful food quite soon. So hopefully you learned something here and you're able to grow an amazing garden and feed your family. All the best to you.